this uh, R&B uh, uh, story is very much you know based on one thing. Okay, there's an uh, expectation of R&B will go higher against you know US dollar, for example. So i.e. the R&B appreciation story, you know, will take place. It's already taking place very steadily, slowly, but the people expect, you know, the R&B will continue to strengthen over time, based on I think a couple of reasons. Number one, the R&B, you know, has been or China has been running, you know, the uh, current account surplus, and if you look around the world, you know, there are only a few, you know, countries in Asia have been running current account surplus. And the rest of the world are running current account deficits, more or less. So basically, it's telling you, from that point of view, you know, the currencies in Asia are undervalued. And there should be more potential for the Asian currencies to appreciate. Especially in China, people have been complaining about the trade account surplus has been so much, so big, the RMB should appreciate more. So that's number one. So people want to find a tool to play this currency, right? Um, number two, People also expecting RMB over time is going to be a reserve currency. And in fact, this is exactly what the Chinese government want to do. The Chinese government, under a lot of pressure by the US to appreciate the currency a lot more, a lot faster, but they are not doing this because they worried about the impact on the export sector. The Chinese export sector, as we know, operating on a very thin margins. If you actually allow the currency to appreciate sharply it will kill the export sector as a result to create all these unemployment problems and social issues and all that social unrest and all that so the chinese government government is thinking about in order to appreciate the currencies too sharply why don't we actually let other countries in the world to hold some of the renminbi i.e to internationalize the currency before it lets the currency to uh, be free, to be fully convertible, right? Because the conventional thinking was, China has to open up the account to make the currency fully convertible, and then becomes a part of the reserve, right? Currency. But actually, the Chinese government thinking the other way, to make the currency more internationally accepted, and then think about opening up the accounts. So in a way, actually, I think this is a very smart move, because once you open up the accounts, you no, know, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Right? Anything can happen, right? It's hot money flows and all that. But now, they, first of all, you know, allow the trade outside of China to settle in RMB, right? And then now they also, you know, basically put Hong Kong as an offshore RMB center. So all these things are basically telling us that Chinese government is very keen to internationalize the currency. And it's met with very good responses, i.e. the neighboring countries, for example, the countries that where they have trade with China, like Korea, Malaysia, even some of the countries in Latin America, they actually hold on to the RMB, despite the RMB is not fully convertible. Now, for those countries, actually, they also think you know they also thinking that uh, it makes sense to hold the RMB because number one, China is a big country; they are going to do more trades with China. Number two, they do believe over time the currency has to be fully convertible. So why don't we store it? You know hold on some of the currency now. And number three, they believe RMB also, you know, will appreciate over time. So why don't we hold on to RMB, right? So all these things are happening, you know, at the same time, and that's what's happening, you know, with this um, internationalization of RMB, and, and, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, so, because this RMB, sorry, because Hong Kong now is the offshore RMB center, it's actually got a blessing from the Beijing government, so a lot of, let's say, the Hong Kong people, or people living in Hong Kong, whether they are Hong Kong people or outside Hong Kong, actually they want to participate in this game, right? And they actually convert some of their Hong Kong dollars into RMB and sit with the Hong Kong banking system. And now the corporations also allowed to open RMB accounts, and also you know they are allowed to issue RMB bonds, the so-called dim sum bonds, right? Um, so suddenly. You have a lot of deposits, like what I said in the chart, you know, 500 billion, whatever, RMB sit in the system. And, and this is growing, you know, so rapidly that the next step is 
since you have the supply, you're going to create the demand, right? So other companies are going to issue RMB bonds, you know, or companies going to issue RMB denominated uh, equities listed in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange to absorb some of this RMB deposits. So slowly and slowly, or quickly and quickly, it becomes, you know, the uh, RMB offshore center. In a way, it's similar to what you saw in London in, what, in the 60s, the uh, euro dollar market, right? When it grew, it just grew exponentially. And I think this is something going to happen in, uh, in Hong Kong. That's why I myself actually are very positive on this uh, situation in Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong right now is the first offshore RMB center. I'm sure once the Chinese government you know, are happy with what's happening, they are going to look at other centers as well. Um, the current talk right now is actually Singapore is also asking the Beijing government you know, want to create another RMB you know, offshore center. Um, so it's not confirmed yet, but you know, you're hearing more and more of this. So regarding this product, this new product, there's been some RMB bond funds already set up in Hong Kong or in Asia. But what we are saying here is actually we are going to launch the first RMB bond fund in Europe, which is going to be uh, usage compliant, so that you no know, most of the investors can buy into it. Um, and this is going to be once we launch it, it's going to be the first one, you know, usage compliant. Um, and and we are actually now you know testing the market. We are seeing a lot of uh, responses, very positive responses, and uh, and the clients. Actually, are very much you know in the same mindset you know because they believe currency is undervalued, will appreciate more part of the reserve currency, so they want to be you know one of the first you know, to get into this, and expect the RMB you know, to appreciate more so that they can benefit from it. Um, as a first user compliant fund, right now what we can do is actually to park most of this in the RMB deposits because we cannot buy you know, a lot of this uh, dim sum, the, this RMB bonds because these bonds are not user compliant yet. But over time, hopefully, when the market becomes more mature and becomes more developed, there are more of these bonds you know, become user compliant and then we can buy into these bonds. So that's the, that's the story. This is a fund that we uh, set up under the uh, Luxembourg you know, structure and very much you know, going to Launch it, you know, through our retail channel, uh, as well as you know our own proprietary channels. So I would expect the retail monies and maybe some of the institutional monies will get into, will look into this. You know, private wealth clients, you know, these are the potential investors we're looking. At. If this RMB, you know, deposit RMB offshore center in Hong Kong, you know, really works. Then I would not uh, surprised to see there will be more and more different types of instruments going to come to the market, denominated in RMB, right? So, for example, the first equity, RMB equity already launched in Hong Kong market, uh, RMB rate. You know, <coughs> I mean, yeah, the, uh, the investment bankers are going to be so innovative, right? Mm -hmm. They are going to create you know all sorts of instruments to absorb you know this uh, supply of uh, this dem this demand, mm -hmm. you know, basically. So, so I think that's why we are, well, that's why we are very, you know, very uh, excited, you know, because again, if you look at what happened to the euro dollar market, right? I mean, once you see the demand, you know, there, then this thing will come up, you know, very fast. And same thing, you know, with the RMB, because if you look around, right, what are the key currencies, you know, in the world, US dollar, euro, these are the two key ones, but then these two key currencies that have their own problems, right? Japanese yen, I mean, given what's happening right there, uh, I mean, right, it's going to be difficult. Um, then, you know, what else? Sterling, all right? Sterling is, used to be a very strong currency, but then again, you know, right now, you know, you don't know what to do with it. A dollar, Australian dollar, um, yes, but then Australia is a small you know, country. So next, all this focus now actually is on RMB. And actually, there's a need for mainland government, for Chinese government, to do something about it, because the problem with China, uh, the, the, the problem right now, you know, with Chinese government is actually they hold so much reserves, and most of these reserves are in U.S. dollars, and they know U.S. dollars depreciating, right? That's why they want to diversify as quickly as possible 
they want to have a strong euro, or they want to have the euro, you know, to hold on to it, right? To be to be to be to be good, because you know, otherwise they have nowhere to park the money. So that's why they have every interest, you know, to make sure people actually, you know, want to own the RMB to diversify the, you know, to get RMB to diversify out to all the countries. So that's an interest for them to do it. No, I mean, no one knows the figure, you know, because it's all, you know, new. But what I can tell you, though, is that I believe before 2020, the RMB will become fully convertible. Right now it's 2011. Uh, um, they already tested testing the market, you know, to get the uh, international acceptance of RMB. And I think once actually they are more comfortable to see there are more people, more countries to hold on to RMB, next step is to open up the accounts. The 2020 is the kind of, you know, that night they have in their mind. Because they already stated in the country policy, government policy, that by 2020, Shanghai will become a global financial center. For Shanghai to become a global financial center, one of the key things they need to do is to make sure RMB becomes fully convertible. So I'm sure, given Chinese uh, governments, uh, the way they do things, if 2020 is the date, they're going to open up a little earlier than that. So now it's 2011, so maybe in five, six years' time, they're going to hear more of this happening. Um, and so I think it's come, it will come sooner than people expected.